Caution, you are now entering the chasm of the goons, the gun runners, and the night nerds. What we're about to show you is going to force you to sit down faster than Biden fell at a recent US Air Force graduation ceremony. <laughs> Thermal changes your perspective, and we promise this video will change you too. So take a slow seat, get comfy, and be ready to be blown away. Let's talk about the new MH25 V2. As you probably already know, the original MH25 is one of our favorite, most used thermal monoculars in our personal armory. This is for good reason. The original MH25 was a powerhouse of a thermal monocular, built tough and capable, yet easy to use and lightweight. The MH25 V2 shares the same genetic material as the V1, but further expands on IRA's ability to make and refine potent thermal units. But before we get into the sauce, let's talk about some of those specs. Just keep in mind, as with any of our gear videos, specifications, pricing, and availability are always subject to change. Check out the link in our description for full up-to-date information on this unit. The IRA MH25 V2 features a potent 640 by 512 core resolution. For first time thermal abusers, that core resolution of this unit produces a crystal clear, well-defined image that makes nighttime navigation, evasion, and detection a breeze. IRA has the clarity game locked down. Much like its older brother, the MH25 V2 does not disappoint in this area. The optical magnification of this unit is 1x and offers up to 8x digital magnification, and the pixel size is 12 micron, while the refresh rate is 50 hertz. Objective focal length falls in at 25 millimeters. Multiple thermal color palettes are available through the menu, and this unit does feature a stadiometric rangefinder to assist in calling distances in total darkness. Advertised detection range is 1,375 yards, and the advertised runtime on one CR123A battery is landing at two and a half hours. If you watched our original MH25 and RH25 content, you will remember that we never liked running the MH25 V1 with those CR123A batteries. We found that the runtime is severely lagging. The same can be said about the V2. Users who plan to spend an entire evening in the darkness should be prepared to purchase an external power pack. Power can be supplied through the USB-C on the front of the housing, but you should be careful to make sure that the power that you're supplying is always five volts or less. Supplying a higher than specified power mount will, I'm gonna repeat that, will result in damage to your MH25. The weight of the units is advertised at 12.1 ounces, which is a bit heavier than the 8.4 ounces of the V1. Users should note, however, that we always recommended the PVS-14 eyepiece adapter for the V1, and that did add a decent amount of weight and almost matched the weight of the V2. IRA included new glass on the V2, so gone are the days of needing to upgrade your eyepiece to the modified PVS-14 eyepiece. Yes, we heard a sigh of relief from the crowd in the back. The V2 makes helmet mounting a little easier than the V1, although we will say this one little caveat. The PVS-14 eyepiece did make helmet mounting a little bit more seamless on the V1 versus the V2. Ethan's gonna explain more about that in his part of this video. The upgraded internal display aids in comfort and ease of use with this unit, and adjustments of all of the settings can be done with one simple, rotating function knob. The simplistic nature of the single knob keeps the form and function as minimalistic as possible. And when we're out in the darkness, minimalistic is what we are all about. The V2 also features Wi-Fi capabilities and now has internal audio, video, and photo recording. So now you can slay bode and record it all, record your next adventure right to your unit, and then share it to your devices and post it to social media. Make those algorithm gods reel in disgust at your ability to remain free. <laughs> Thank you. 
The MH25 features the same mum rail as its previous version. The dovetail adapters, like the one I have on this unit that we sell on our website, will allow helmet mounting and properly positioning the unit on a bridge for helmet usage. The one irony about this unit compared to the V1 is the paper specs are nearly identical between the two units with some obvious refinements in some of those specifications. Anyone who was originally considering the V1 is gonna find themselves right at home on the V2. Think of the V2 as a nearly identical twin to the V1 in fit and form with a few key changes that ultimately refine this package even further. Just like the V1, the V2 is not able to be mounted to a weapon. For users looking for weapon mountable capabilities, we would recommend considering the RH-25, the Nox-18, or something like the Sting IR-640 from AGM. For folks more concerned about mounting a thermal to their helmet, the V2 checks all of the boxes. We have found that the Mod Armory Bridge is the best readily available bridge on the market to bridge this with a 14. We stock these on our website and we highly recommend them for anyone needing to bridge their MH25 V2 to their helmet. The MH25 sits right at home in that bridge. The MH25 line of thermal monoculars is purpose built for handheld or helmet mounted use. It's small enough as you can see to fit in a pocket and it's light enough to spend an entire evening in the darkness with the unit mounted on your helmet without feeling fatigued. It's potent enough to be considered one of the absolute best thermal monoculars on the market. The MH25 sets the bar for what all dedicated helmet mounted thermal monoculars should strive for. I spent hundreds and hundreds of hours running the MH25 V1 with a PVS-14 eyepiece. This unit served me extremely well through all those hours of predator hunting and time in the darkness. You no longer can get the MH25 V1. The MH25 V2 is now what's available. My biggest complaint about the MH25 V1 is that it did not have internal recording. Very often I would have loved to find something in the darkness with this but have it recorded so that I could show you guys exactly what it's like the second I find that animal or that thing that I'm looking for. It creates a dynamic that would be a lot more entertaining to watch via video if I could show you what I saw with my helmet before I transitioned to my weapon. And now the V2 unlocks that capability. Ultimately, if you are a dedicated helmet mounted thermal guy and you have no desire to put the unit on your rifle, the MH25 V2 can definitely be the unit for you. If you want a rifle mount as well as helmet mount, obviously the RH25 would be a better choice because the RH25 has a reticle, it can be zeroed, you can mount it on a weapon. As you can see, we have a lot of different options of night vision and thermal on the table here in front of us. Ultimately, when you boil it all down, to the source where this stuff is manufactured. All of these units on the table here, minus some of the night vision, is all manufactured by Infrared Outdoor. Now, as dealers, we're not obtaining these units from the same distributor, but it does all came from the same place, and it is all high quality across the board. The Jerry FB is the option that I have here on the left, and the Jerry CE5 is the option that you see here on my right. We also have videos surrounding these options that can get you into the thermal realm with night vision, and that is fusion. These two fusion thermal devices can definitely be a solid option to help you get into the thermal realm. Ultimately, as a predator hunter, I'm gonna continue to stick with a dedicated thermal device like the MH25 V2, or the RH-25. But for those of you that might have binocular night vision and want to add thermal, that's where the Jerry CE-5 would come in. And for somebody that has nothing, but has a pretty good budget that they could spend, the Jerry FB would definitely be a solid option as well. You can check out those two YouTube videos next.
Let's recap a few final thoughts on the MH25 V2. The MH25 V2 is an excellent unit. It is lightweight, easy to use, and extremely capable, just like the V1. The best way to compare this unit to the V1 is to think of a more refined V1 that also has the internal recording capabilities. IRA didn't shake the globe with the release of this product, but they did take an already excellent product and made it excellenter. Let's quickly recap a few of the uses of the MH25 V2. As a handheld unit, this would be an excellent contender. Battery life is meh when using a CR123A, and for that reason, we think that you should consider an external power supply. It is by far one of the lightest thermal monoculars that we have handled and have in our armory. As a helmet-mounted unit, the V2 is lighter and smaller than the RH25. It is more compact than the V1 MH25 when you compare the V1 with the PVS-14 eyepiece to the V2, although it should be noted that the weight of the units is nearly identical when you're running the PVS-14 eyepiece. The MH25 V2 is not a clip-on or weapon-mounted thermal, so if you need capabilities to weapon mount a unit, the MH25 V2 might not be the best fit for you right now. It is purpose-built to be discreet, compact, and potent while being small enough to mount on your helmet. Overall, we have been pleased with the V2. While not earth shattering compared to the V1, IRA took real world data into consideration and further refined the already incredible MH25 V1. Truth be told, we had very few complaints about the V1 to begin with, aside from that battery life. We've always found that the V1 served its purpose and had a prominent place in our night shenanigans. The V2 simply takes some of the extra features and takes this unit one step further. If you're in the market for a potent thermal monocular, the MH25 V2 might be a perfect fit for you, but we want to know what you think. Is the MH25 V2 the perfect thermal monocular? Would you consider purchasing one of these units? If you are ready to get into your next unit, whatever that unit might be, consider hitting up our website. We have links down in the description that will take you right over to our website. Our primary mission is to get you into the unit that will fit you the best. If you have questions at all, leave us a comment, or if you want to speak to one of us directly, shoot us an email at cs at arcane.com. Our CS team is always available to text, call, or email you. We want to help guide you into the right unit, not push you into one. We're happy to help you in any way that we can. So get your unit, get focused, get trained, get out there and get into the darkness, become more formidable and become more capable. We'll see you all in the darkness.